So we just finished looking at three different examples of poets performing poetry that they have written, and we're calling this slam poetry. Now you are going to take a look at another example of a poet performing his poetry, and like the other ones that we watched before, this one was also performed on MTV's Def Jam. You will have a handout where you will need to follow along with the poet as he reads his poem and you will be looking to identify some of those things we talked about related to rhythm. Um, specifically you will be looking for repetition, you will be looking at line length, you will be looking at the pauses, and you will be looking at the meter of the poem as well as how all of those things together that create the rhythm affect the feeling of the poem. So to have great poet, poets there must be great audiences too and when a poet performs his or her poetry it is a wonderful example to share that with an audience. The poetry performance we will be viewing was featured on the television series Death Poetry Jam the show features established and up-and-coming spoken word poets. Though technically not a poetry slam, deaf poetry has become heavily associated with the poetry slam movement. A poetry slam is a competition where poets read or recite original work. These performances are then judged on a numeric scale by previously selected members of the audience. While watching Daniel Beatty perform Knock Knock, follow along on the printed lyrics. Mark parts of the poem that stand out to you in any way. This can be anything from words you think are particularly strong to questions you may have about the poem. As a boy, I shared a game with my father. Played it every morning till I was three. He would knock knock on my door and I'd pretend to be asleep till he got right next to the bed. Then I would get up and jump into his arms. Good morning, Papa. And my Papa, he would tell me that he loved me. We shared a game. Knock knock. Until that day when the knock never came. And my mama takes me on a ride past cornfields on this never-ending highway till we reach a place of high, rusty gates. A confused little boy I entered the building carried in my mama's arms. Knock knock. We reach a room of windows and brown faces. Behind one of the windows sits my father. I jump out of my mama's arms and run joyously towards my papa's, only to be confronted by this window. I knock, knock, trying to break through the glass, trying to get to my father. I knock, knock, as my mama pulls me away before my papa even says a word. And for years, he has never said a word. And so 25 years later, I write these words for the little boy in me who still awaits his papa's knock. Papa, come home, because I miss you. Miss you waking me up in the morning and telling me you love me. Papa, come home, because there's things I don't know, and I thought maybe you could teach me how to shave, how to dribble a ball, how to talk to a lady, how to walk like a man. Papa, come home, because I decided a while back I want to be just like you, but I'm forgetting who you are. And 25 years later, a little boy cries, and so I write these words and try to heal and try to father myself, and I dream up a father who says the words my father did not. Dear son, I'm sorry I never came home. For every lesson I fail to teach here, these words Shave in one direction with strong, deliberate strokes to avoid irritation Dribble the page with the brilliance of your ballpoint pen Walk like a god and your goddess will come to you No longer will I be there to knock on your door So you must learn to knock for yourself Knock, knock down doors of racism and poverty that I could not Knock, knock on doors of opportunity for the lost brilliance of the black men who crowd these cells Knock, knock with diligence for the sake of your children Knock, knock for me, for as long as you are free These prison gates cannot contain my spirit Spirit. The best of me still lives in you. Knock, knock with the knowledge that you are my son, but you are not my choices. Yes, we are our father's sons and daughters, but we are not their choices. But despite their absences, we are still here, still alive, still breathing, with the power to change this world, one little boy and girl at a time. Knock, knock, who's there? We are. <laughs> So now that you've listened to the poem, you will see on your paper that there are some discussion questions. Please answer these on your paper. The first question asks, what words and phrases are repeated? 
underline them in the poem and write them down on your sheet. The second question says, what do you notice about the line breaks? Are all the lines the same length? Why do you think the poet did this? The third question asks, does this poem have a regular meter or a varied meter? That is, does it sound the same throughout the poem? And the last question says, what feeling is created by the rhythm of this poem? After you finish answering those questions, go on to the next page, and it's time for you to write. Beattie's poem ends with a letter in which he gives himself advice about life. Your assignment is to write a poetic letter to yourself where you give yourself advice you need to hear. Beattie writes of particular obstacles he has to overcome. As a starting point, you might want to think about any obstacles or challenges you are currently facing. What advice do you need to hear to succeed in school or in life? If you cannot think of any advice you need to hear, think of a friend or family member that could benefit from good advice. After you finish that, you will be turning in both your notes on the poem and your letter. Get to work.